The Daniel Penny case in New York City. We've been uh, following the case closely on this show. Um, and now that it's gone to trial, uh, some new details, new to us, but not new to the prosecutors who brought this case, are coming to light. So here's the, uh, the Daily Mail on Friday. This is the report. Police detected a pulse on homeless man Jordan Neely after he was put in a chokehold by Marine veteran Daniel Penny. Bombshell new body cam footage reveals. The video became public today as Penny's manslaughter trial began in uh, Manhattan. Penny, then 24, is accused of killing Neely by putting him in the, what prosecutors say was a fatal chokehold. During opening statements today, body cam footage of the moment cops found Neely was shown. NYPD officers arrived on the train at Fulton Station at 2.33 uh, 2 p.m. Uh, two police officers confirmed that Neely still had a pulse when they arrived. I got a pulse, one said. A second police officer confirmed that he too felt a pulse. Neely was unconscious, lying on the subway car uh, floor. When asked how Neely ended up there, Penny replied, I put him out. Despite initially detecting a pulse, they issued Narcan, the drug used to reverse opioid overdoses, to Neely and started CPR at 238. Uh, at 3.13, almost 45 minutes after police first arrived, Neely was still on the train. He was not pronounced dead until uh, he arrived at Lenox Health Hospital in uh, Greenwich Village later that afternoon. Among witnesses on the first day of evidence was an NYPD sergeant who testified that none of his team performed mouth-to-mouth on Neely because he was a drug user, quote-unquote. Quote, he seemed to be a drug user. He was an apparent drug user. He was very dirty. I didn't want them to get hepatitis. If he did wake up, he would have been vomiting. I didn't want my officers to do that. He was filthy. He looked like a homeless individual. You have to protect your officers. I wouldn't want my officer to get sick if the person throws up. Okay. So, uh, Neely had a pulse when officers arrived. They refused to perform mouth-to-mouth because he was filthy and they didn't want to get sick. And then he was pronounced dead later in the afternoon. So, uh, so, so what are we doing here exactly? Like, what is this case? Penny did not kill Neely. He was still alive. He was still alive. Okay. The, 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 the officers did not perform mouth-to-mouth. And now Penny is on trial. It seems so that New York City can basically cover its own ass. And look, I'll say, I don't blame the officers for not performing mouth-to-mouth on Jordan Neely. Um, Getting hepatitis or some other disgusting disease is a very real concern when you're putting your mouth on some tweaked-out druggie. And, uh, and, uh, you know, he throws up and then you, like, you're, throws up into your mouth. I mean, that's... um, I don't think we should require police officers to contract diseases from homeless drug addicts as part of their job. Like, that shouldn't be part of the job that you just say, well, you're just going to get a disease now. Uh, that's not a job requirement. And um, and I wouldn't, you know, I'll put a, I wouldn't do it. I'm not going to get infected by a drugged out vagrant. I'm just not. Um, so, so I get that. I do. I don't blame them. But Daniel Penny did not kill Jordan Neely. He was alive. It, it, it sounds like it was, well, they don't tell us exactly, like, it, it, how long was it from when police arrived to when he was actually pronounced dead? They just say later that afternoon. Sounds like it might have been hours later. Um, at the very least, it was more than 45 minutes. We know that. And he was obviously already on drugs. All right, let's talk about something that affects all of us, taxes. The October 15th deadline has passed, and if you're not prepared could be in for a world of hurt. Do you owe back taxes? Are your returns still unfiled? Did you miss the deadline to file for an extension? Now that we're past October 15th, the IRS is probably gearing up for some aggressive enforcement. Trust me, you don't want to be on their radar. We're talking wage garnishments, frozen bank accounts, even property seizures. It's not pretty. But before you start panicking, there's still hope. Tax Network USA has helped taxpayers save over a billion dollars in tax debt and filed over 10,000 tax returns. These guys specialize in reducing tax burdens for hardworking Americans just like you. Look, I get it. Dealing with the IRS is about as fun as a root canal, but ignoring the problem won't make it go away. Don't wait any longer for a complimentary consultation. Call today at 1-800-958-1000 or visit their website at tnusa.com slash Walsh. Their experts will walk you through a few simple questions to see how much you can save. That's 1-800-958-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash Walsh today. Don't let the IRS take advantage of you. Get the help you need with Tax Network USA. Did the headlock even kill Neely? It doesn't sound like that's the case. Is this yet another case where someone has an overdose and then we end up sending someone else to prison because that person happened to be making physical contact with the guy who was overdosing? Is that what it is now in America? Like if you're in the vicinity of someone who overdoses, now you go to jail for killing them? 
because they chose to take a lethal dose of drugs? Um, I mean, we don't know if that's what happened here. We don't know. I mean, the, the facts are still coming out, but it sounds like it sounds very, very likely, very plausible. And um, listen, if you have an overdose, that's on you. Nobody should go into prison for that, whether you're George Floyd or Jordan Neely or anybody else. Your overdose is your own fault, nobody else's. The idea that anybody else should go to prison for that, I mean, unless you want to arrest the drug dealer who gave you the drugs, then, then uh, I'm, I'm all on board with that. But somebody who was not involved in the drug transaction being arrested for it, that's crazy. Um. Someone, in fact, who was protecting the community from you because you were cracked out of your skull and acting in a threatening way. That's even crazier. And again, we don't know if Neely actually died of a drug overdose, but there is, there is precedent you know, for this kind of thing. We know that. And what makes, what makes this so outrageous is that even if Neely actually was killed by Daniel Penny, incidentally, um, even if Penny, uh, while restraining Neely, accidentally caused him to lose his life, it would still be an absolutely ridiculous, insane, outrageous miscarriage of justice to put Penny uh, on trial for that. Neely was threatening people on the train. That's a fact. Like, nobody disputes that. He had to be restrained. You know, if you're acting in an explicitly threatening way and somebody has to restrain you because of how you're acting and you die as a result, that's your fault. That's on you. You know, and, and if, if even if they use a little bit more force than they needed to, that's we don't the onus when you are the one who is a threat to the people around you. The onus is not on everybody else to make sure that they restrain you in exactly the correct way so that it doesn't harm you. This isn't the whole thing now is your fault. Whatever happens next is your fault. That's on you. Um, don't want to get choked out on the subway? Don't go around threatening to kill people. Pretty simple. It's like not a high bar to clear here. So even if the prosecution's theory of the case is true. This would still be a monumental injustice, but it sounds like their theory isn't even true. And so uh, that just makes it, you know, that just means that, that really everybody involved in bringing this case, everybody involved in prosecution should be in jail. Like, they sh you should go to jail for this kind of thing. That's what should happen. The prosecutors in this case are a much greater threat to the public than Daniel Penny is. Daniel Penny is actually protecting the public, right? Like, the who, I don't care where you pretend to stand on the Jordan, would you feel unsafe having Daniel Penny in your neighborhood, on the train with you, sitting next to you somewhere? But would you feel unsafe? No. If anything, you'd feel safer. You're not going to feel unsafe unless you're planning on getting up and threatening to kill people. Well, then, like, maybe you would feel uh, less safe. But you should feel less safe in that case. So Daniel Penny's not making the community less safe. Uh, these prosecutors are, on the other hand. By prosecuting law-abiding people who are protecting the community, they are actively making the community less safe. Thanks for checking out this video. If you'd like to listen to my full podcast on the go, you can check out The Matt Walsh Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.